I want to start with the shorter trading hours. Many say this would lead to more diversity. Isn't it high time to start thinking about and making changes that would lead to any diversity in this very largely dominated male profession? Well, uh, there is no debate about the need to boost and, and favor uh, diversity within our, our industry, and, and clearly no, no debate on that, on that objective. Uh, the only uh, answer we have provided uh, to the market is that following a consultation with the buy side, the sell side, but also all the stakeholders, the proprietary traders, the, the retail uh, uh, investment community, I mean, they were just completely mixed views on whether or not uh, uh, trading hours should be shortened. And, and that's why, uh, in order to avoid fragmentation of the market, in order to, uh, to, 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 to address the lack of consensus, we, uh, we have decided to, to, for, for the status quo. Uh, but but you, you're right, uh, a profound debate must, must, must take place uh, within the industry about this diversity issue. I don't think shortening trading hours is the one-size-fits-all solution. I believe that across Europe, there are very different situations. In some countries, um, um, there is uh, heavy uh, tax subsidies on, 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 on daycare, on, on, on staff at home. And, and you can find on some training floors on the continent more uh, female uh, staff and managers than, on, uh, than in London. So the thing, the situation is much more differentiated. And I don't think uh, that the trading hours was the only way to address uh, the issue. As I said to, 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 to one of your colleagues yesterday, uh, firms have invested a lot of money in gyms for, for the past 10 years. Uh, uh, maybe they can invest a little bit in, uh, in daycare as we do. Do you have any, you know, we see um, study after study showing that more women on boards means more profitable companies. We see uh, Moody's um, uh, giving the benefit of the doubt to companies that have more diversity. It seems like the best, it's in the best interest of your shareholders to diversify. And Metrics, of course, are necessary in order to meet goals. Do you have any specific metrics that you want to meet in terms of diversifying your, your board or your business? Again, on the continent, in the various countries where we operate, in, in Lisbon, Paris, uh, Amsterdam, uh, Oslo, uh, Dublin, uh, and, and uh, Copenhagen, uh, there are these sort of metrics in the local law, and we are totally committed to meet those different standards because I do share your comment about the fact that uh, uh, enhancing and unleashing uh, at the right level of seniority the energy of uh, female colleagues is, is the best way to, to provide a sustainable growth to respective organizations. So that's what, what we are doing. Stefan, speaking about culture, what about work from home in your company? When do you plan to bring staff back? What percentage of your employees are still working from home? The vast majority of our staff works from the office, and we are back home uh, as, as a rule by default uh, since uh, the end of May. So um, uh, the situation obviously is slightly differentiated in some of our offices. We have a large team in London where the situation is big. Obvious reasons you are familiar with. We have a, a team, in particular in a forex business in New York, where the situation is differentiated. For, but for most locations on the continent, people work for, from the office. Uh, for, for a very profound reason, we believe that the best way to benefit from the full uh, wealth of uh, human capital is to have people to interact physically. We do not believe that uh, there is a sustainable model where the vast majority of, uh, of the of the employees operate uh, from um, from Zoom, Teams, or Skype, and uh, and we believe that uh, in addition to analytical contributions, people must contribute emotionally for risk-taking decisions, for for creativity, for um, for clients' interactions, and um, and that's why the model will be a model where the vast majority of the employee will continue to work from the office. Um, because that we don't want Euronext to become a cloud company or uh, a consortium of self-employed uh, people working from their living room. And, um, and that, that, that's a very, very profound uh, choice. Obviously, we are not uh, blind. Uh, we are need to draw the consequences of what happened for the past few months. We are going to create more flexibility, but uh, uh, for people to work from home in a more um, uh, regular manner than in the past, but this will be a flexibility, but by default, people will have to meet together to, to create value for, for your next. 
Um, you know, even even with the situation the way it uh, is, you beat the highest estimate in terms of your revenue in the second quarter uh, with 210. 0.7 million euros. You still were profitable. Dollar 23 adjusted EBS, beating second quarter uh, EBITDA estimates. Um, what kind of improvements, though, do you see in Q3 and Q4, if any? Can you can you quantify your expectations for the second half? No, we don't provide the guidelines uh, uh, for the for your acceptance cost, uh, where we have uh, renewed uh, the existing. Uh, reiterated the existing guidelines. What I can tell you is that uh, uh, the, the, the current semester, which, which has been um, good and strong, actually, we, we delivered the same amount of EBITDA uh, for the first part of 2020 as we did for the full year uh, 2016, not many years ago, just three years ago. This is the outcome of uh, obviously volatility and volumes and that's for was available for everyone, but also hard work for the past few years to um, to to do a discipline M and A, and and we are yielding now or we are harvesting the benefit of a, of a, a very disciplined uh, acquisition uh, strategy, and and that's that that this is where we lead the two boosters of this profitability. Uh, one of these boosters, the contribution of acquisition, will continue to be there for the second part of the year. Volatility, uh, it's uh, no one has a crystal ball, um, but uh, what is under our control, like cost discipline, discipline in deployment of capital, will, will remain for the second part of the year. Obviously, on the top line for the part which is volume driven, the equity uh, trading franchise, it, it, it remains to be seen whether um, the sort of relative slowdown in Q2 compared to Q1 will continue or whether we are now in a sort of new normal. Stefan, earlier this month, Deutsche Börse had a technical glitch. It really frustrated traders. It also muted market activity. What steps are you taking to make sure that your exchange doesn't suffer any sort of similar technical glitches? We haven't suffered uh, so this type of technical glitches because we have invested a lot of money in the complete overall overall technology platform, and we have now operating uh, a new technology, completely brand new, called Optic, which was uh, released uh, in uh, in 18, 19, and and for the last. Uh, Parts uh, in the course of uh, at the beginning of 2020, and and it is something completely new with uh, upgrade releases uh, every weekend, uh, uh, one of its kind uh, stability, latency, performance, and we just invest a lot of energy and resources in technology, and that's how we uh, deliver to our client uh, stability. But it's it's a it's a profound long-term uh, commitment.